Good morning. Nice to see you all here. Hopefully more people will join us before too long. It's great to see you here and have you uh, keep in touch with us on our Facebook, on our you know, uh, email and uh, the messaging and all the other ways that we try to keep in touch with you all to let you know what's going on. And also thank you for your prayer requests that you've given us. And uh, <clears throat> join us online for prayer at 7.30. Um, uh, Cindy sent out a link uh, by email, I think, last week. Also, you can contact uh, Robert Palmer for an invitation that he can send you. And uh, also, thank you for your offerings that you have uh, graciously given us here, either in the plate or uh, by text or by mail or all the different ways that you've done that. So thank you so much for staying in touch and, and able to um, you know, uh, give to the work of <clears throat> God's kingdom here. And uh, I want to remind you that the General Assembly meeting will be November 15th here <clears throat> uh, between services. Um, and at that, sur at that assembly, we will uh, be voting on new um, or voting on people uh, in the elective offices that are coming up for election. And uh, if any of you have had a um, desire to become part of the leadership of, the, of Epiphany here, uh, we ask you to let Robert Palmer know so that he can add your name uh, to the list of people that we'll be um, voting on. And um, <clears throat> as you know, Pastor Oranger declined our call, and so therefore we are in the process of gathering more names to send to the district office. Today is the last day to nominate someone uh, for pastor, the senior pastor here at Epiphany. There is some forms and a box to put the forms in out there. So please, if you have not also, if you have not done so, uh, please do that today. Today's the last day for that. Even if you've nominated someone else or someone uh, for this process, maybe last year or even the year before, uh, go ahead and nominate them again if you want to, because God works in the hearts of pastors to determine whether or not uh, you know, someone who may not be available last year or the year before may be available now. So go ahead and do that if you would like to do that. Today's the last day. Finally, I want to talk about um, what we're going to do for Reformation. Reformation's next week. Uh, go figure, man. This, this uh, year has been going by awfully fast, I think. Um, Reformation, and also the 70th anniversary of Epiphany as a church. And so we want to commemorate that. We want to do something special for that. And so, you know, in years past, we've given out like the little uh, magnetic stickers of the Luther Rose. We've given out bookmarks and stuff like that. So this year we decided that we're going to have a food drive in commemoration for Epiphany Lutheran Church and for the Reformation. And so, beginning next week, we're going to be collecting non-perishable food items here in the lobby. There'll be a big basket out there, and uh, we're, we're setting just kind of a little goal of, of 70 items. We know, we hope that we're going to get much more than that, 70 to commemorate the 70th anniversary of Epiphany. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, do that for about three weeks, and then we're going to turn all the food that we've gathered over to Lutheran Social Services of North Florida for their food pantry to give out to their um, uh, constituents there, the people that need uh, to have some um, you know, food items uh, in their lives so that you know, they, they, they really need it. And it's a, it's a great uh, way that we can honor uh, our commitment to God for taking care of our neighbors. So um, so next week, when you come, uh, bring a non-perishable food item or two or three or four or whatever you want to do, or even um, gift cards uh, would be helpful. So uh, we want to do that. And, uh, and I think that's all the uh, announcements that I have. And so let's begin. Let's begin this morning in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. Please rise for our first town song. Through the 
can see a light that is coming through the heart that holds on. A glorious light beyond no compare. There will be an end to these troubles, but until that day comes, we'll let to blow your hair on the earth. I will fear no never let go of us. You always love us. You're always with us. Even though sometimes we think that uh, you have abandoned us, we know that that's not true. It's more like we have gone away from you. Lord God, we thank you for loving us so much that you promised us that you would never leave us, you would never forsake us, and we love you for that. Lord God, we ask you to be here today with us. Send, rain down your Holy Spirit on us to open our hearts to open our minds, to open our mouths in praise to you. Lord God, we look for you in your word, in the message, in your body and your and blood of Jesus that we partake of today. Thank you, Lord, for not ever letting go of us. Through the calm and through the storm, you never let go of us. And we thank you for that. Come and be with us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. First reading on the 20th Sunday after Pentecost is from Isaiah chapter 45, verses 1 through 7. This is what the Lord says to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I take hold of to subdue nations before him, and to strip kings of their armor, to open doors before him, so that gates will not be shut. I will go before you and will level the mountains. I will break down gates of bronze and cut through bars of iron. I will give you hidden treasures, riches stored in secret places, so that you may know that I am the Lord, the God of Israel, who summons you by name. For the sake of Jacob, my servant, of Israel, my chosen, I summon you by name and bestow on you a title of honor, though you do not acknowledge me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Apart from me, there is no God. I will strengthen you though you have not acknowledged me, so that from the rising of the sun to the place of its setting, people may know there is none beside me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form the light and create darkness. I bring prosperity and create disaster. I, the Lord, do all these things. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 1-10. through 10. Paul, Silas, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians in God, the Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace and peace to you. We always thank God for all of you and continually mention you in our prayers. We remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith, your labor prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. 
For we know, brothers and sisters loved by God, that he has chosen you because our gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit and deep conviction. You know how we lived among you for your sake. We be, you became imitators of us and of the Lord. For you welcomed the message in the midst of severe suffering with the joy given by the Holy Spirit. And so you became a model to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. The Lord's message rang out from you not only in Macedonia and Achaia. Your faith in God has become known everywhere. Therefore, we do not need to say anything about it, for they themselves report what kind of reception you gave us. They tell how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the coming wrath. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise out of respect for the words and ministry of Jesus Christ. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Then the Pharisees went out and laid plans to trap him in his words. They sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians. Teacher, they said, we know that you are a man of integrity and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You aren't swayed by others because you pay no attention to who they are. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it right to pay the imperial tax to Caesar or not? But Jesus, knowing their evil intent, said, You hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin used for paying the tax. They brought him a denarius, and he asked them, Whose image is this, and whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then he said to them, So give back to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. When they heard this, they were amazed. So they left him and went away. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Do I have any little ones? <laughs> Working on it. You want to come up? Hey there, how are you? Good to see you. Let me ask you a question. Have you heard your grandma and grandpa talk about paying taxes? Sometimes, yeah. I bet you it wasn't a good conversation, was it? <laughs> Because a lot of people don't like to pay taxes at the government, do they? Yeah. Let me ask you, uh, have you, do you pay taxes? You don't? Well, let me ask you some questions. Have you ever gotten money from somebody for like maybe a birthday or Christmas or something like that? Oh, and from the tooth fairy. That's good. Yeah. And did you ever go to a store and buy something with the money that you got? Yeah. You know what? I hate to tell you this, but you paid taxes. Because whenever you buy something from the store, they automatically charge you tax on that. Now, I bet you don't think about that, didn't you? Well, yeah, so you pay, you, even you pay taxes. Everybody pays taxes at one time or another. And sometimes we don't like to pay tax, but we know that we have to, because that's just the way it is when we live here on this earth, right? Um, I wonder what Jesus would say if you asked him, is it right for children to pay tax? Well, if he said, yes, it's right, then the children probably would be mad at him, you know, or, or sort of a little disappointed because he said that because they don't like to pay taxes. But if he said, uh, no, you shouldn't pay tax, then... The politicians, the government might be mad at them because they need money to, to run the, the state and run the government and things like that. So kind of a hard question to answer, isn't it? Well, you know what? That pretty much the same thing happened. And we, we just heard it in our gospel lesson today. When someone came up to Jesus and said, should we pay tax? And so Jesus, knowing that they were just trying to trap him in that 
you know, they don't want, he didn't want anybody mad at him. Uh, so he said, well, give me, give me a coin. Give me some, uh, you know, so, something that you use to pay tax. And so when they did, they said, whose picture or, or inscription is on the coin that they brought him? And they said, well, the emperor, Caesar. And he said, well, give to Caesar the money that is Caesar's because it has his, it has his image on it but give to God what belongs to God. Now, what belongs to God? Pretty much everything, right? Including us, right? Because you know what? We're created in his image, aren't we? And so we should give him all of us, all of ourselves, everything, all of our lives should be dedicated to Jesus, huh? Because he created us. Isn't that cool? Let me ask you about this. This is what we use today to pay taxes, among other things, and buy things. Um, whose picture is on there? George Washington. He was our first president. And so he kind of represents the government, doesn't he? And what does it say above his head? Can you read that? The United States of America. So this kind of belongs to the government, doesn't it? Even though we have it in our pockets. So it's right for us to pay the tax with these things. But when it comes to God, it's right that we pay him back with all of our being, you know, meaning that we do things the way he wants us to do things. Only with the what? Only the president is allowed to make the money? Well, <laughs> well, you mean by physically making the money, right? Yeah. Well, it's, uh, it, yeah, it's, it's the government actually prints the money. That's what you're talking about, printing the money? Yeah. And then we get it when we do some work or when people give us some money. And then we pay taxes on that, you know? So, but God asks us to give to him, and that means to help other people. That means to uh, pray to him and to do things, to come and worship him. And that's what he wants from us. That's how we give to him what is his. That's how we do that. So let's pray. Dear Jesus, we just thank you for this lesson that you've taught us about how we should give both to uh, worldly things, but also give back to you. Sometimes we forget the giving back to you part. And so we thank you for coming to us in your word and reminding us that we have an obligation to pay you too. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for coming up. All right. Well, I greet you once again this morning in the abundant name of Jesus Christ. There was a young boy who liked to carve things, and so he spent many hours carving a little toy sailboat that he used out in a stream that ran by his property. And so he was out in the stream with his boat one day, playing with it, and all of a sudden the current caught the boat and kind of swept it down the stream. And he wasn't fast enough to catch it, so it went out of the, uh, his reach. And he wasn't strong enough to go through the weeds and the briars and the other things that were lining the river there. And so pretty soon he couldn't catch up with it and the boat went out of his sight and was lost. And the boy mourned for that boat, but he finally gave, gave up looking for it. Well, sometime later, he was downtown, and he was walking by a store that sold model boats and, you know, other, other things. And he looked in the window, and he saw a boat in there that was for sale that looked just like the boat that he carved. And so he looked at it really close, and he said, that is my boat. And so he went in, and he told the uh, shopkeeper his story, and the owner said, well, I purchased this from someone who found the boat. And although the shop owner would like to 
uh, the boy to have the boat, he said, I can't just give it to you, but you can buy it for what I paid for. Well, the little boy went home and he got some money and he came back and he paid for the boat and he took it home with him. As he was walking home, he looked at that toy boat and he said, little boat, you're twice mine. I created you and now I bought you back. You're twice mine. Now, I tell you that story because that's exactly how God feels about us. He could certainly say to us, you're twice mine. I created you and I bought you back by nothing, with nothing less than the blood of my son. I bought you back from sin and death. You're twice mine. You know, we live in this temporary world until we go home to our main home, which is in heaven, right? And while we're in this world, we know that there is a price to be paid for many of the things that we do and buy and have. And as long as we're here, we have bills to pay. And it just seems like every day we owe somebody more. We also know that along with any debt that we have, we have a responsibility to pay that debt. We have to go to work, or we have to have some kind of income because we've got so much to pay for. Well, in our gospel lesson today from uh, Matthew chapter 22, we hear about this theme of having to pay our debts. And it comes about with the attempt of the Pharisees to try to uh, trap Jesus into telling the people, oh, you don't have to worry about paying your bills, I mean your uh, taxes. Now I want you to notice here in this event that the Pharisees were in league with the Herodians. Now the Herodians were a political party that were loyal to the emperor, Herod Antipas. And of course they were loyal to the Roman government. Now why would the Jewish leaders who hated the Roman occupation of Palestine, why would they team up with a group of people that supported the Roman occupation? Well, it all had to do with trapping Jesus in, their, in his answer to their very simple question. I mean, I could just see that they sat up nights trying to think up a way to trap Jesus, right? In this foolproof plan that they had. Of course, you can't fool Jesus. The question was, is it right to pay the imperial tax to Caesar or not? Well, no one likes to pay government taxes. But in this case, the, some of the taxes went not only to support the opulent lifestyle of the emperor Caesar, but also the Roman uh, uh, aristocracies. And on top of that, it supported some pagan temples. And so this was just a thorn in the side of the Jewish people. And it was a um, reminder of the Roman occupation that they were under. And so the trap was, if Jesus said, you don't have to pay the taxes to Rome, the Herodians would come in and want Jesus arrested for inciting rebellion against the government. But if he said, yes, it was right to pay the tax, then they would complain to the citizens, the people there, that Jesus was against God because God was the only king that they recognized. Well, Jesus knew how to answer this. And so he told them, show me a coin used for paying the tax. Whose image is on it and whose inscription? Caesar's, they said. So go, go, you know, give back to Caesar what is Caesar's and give to God what is God's. In the King James Version is where we have Jesus saying, render unto, unto Caesar what is Caesar's. Now the word render means to give back. Well, Jesus shut them up with his answer. They couldn't find fault with it. But we have to know that Jesus was saying much more here than what we might deduce from reading this account. 
Jesus was saying that we have a twofold obligation or debt. And we have a responsibility to pay both of those. One is a horizontal obligation, an obligation to the government, an obligation to pay whoever we owe, right? But we also have a vertical obligation. And that obligation is to God who created us, who, who gives us what we need to live out our lives in this world. Here, Jesus challenged the people to pay what they owe, both to man and to God. Now, we all know about paying taxes, right, to the government. Um, and what happens if we don't pay those taxes? I mean, does the letters IRS mean anything to you all? But what do we owe to God? Well, the ultimate explanation of that has less to do with about taxes and more to do about our relationship to the government and our relationship to God. Consider what Jesus said here and how he escaped from their trap. He had them produce a coin that would be used to pay the government tax. The first half of what Jesus said can be sort of paraphrased like, you know, this is Caesar's coin. It's got his picture or image on it. It belongs to him. Go back, go, go and give it back to him, right? But the second half of his answer, what can we give back to God, is what's got his, what has his image on it? We do. We have his image on us. After all, in the first chapter of Genesis, we read about how God created mankind. It says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And so to give back what's God's reminded them, and it should remind us, to focus on our relationship to God. Jesus' statement meant that God always trumps the debt to Caesar or any other worldly debts, because whether or not us humans pay our taxes or not, it's more important for us to focus on and honor our image, the image of God, which every human being carries. We may be obligated to pay the taxes and to pay the other debts that we owe, but we owe everything, our very being, to God. In our first lesson today from Isaiah chapter 54, God reminds the Israelites just a few of the things that He's done for them. You know, He's leveled the mountains, broke down the gates, cut through the bars, gave them hidden treasures, summoned them by name, strengthened them. But we too owe God for what He's done for us. And not the least of which is open the door to eternal life by the life, death, and resurrection of His only Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus paid for our disobedience. He bought us back. We're twice His. He created us. And He bought us back by the blood of Jesus. We now have a debt. We have an a, um, uh, obligation. We have a responsibility. We have a, a commitment. Whatever you want to call it. To render to God what is God's. Now, I'm not talking just about money. I'm not talking about just material things. I'm talking about what you have today that belongs to God? Are you holding on to your time? Do you really think it's your time? Perhaps God's saying to you, maybe whispering in your ear, I want you to spend more time with me. I want to get to know you personally. And not just an hour or two on Sunday morning. Maybe God is calling you to make a commitment to faithfully block out time in your schedule for Him daily. Or perhaps you're holding on to maybe some of your talents and some of your abilities that you're really unwilling uh, to, you know, that he, that he wants you to work for, for work in His kingdom. But you, you're sitting on the sidelines. You're, you're, you're seeming like a spectator. 
you're not willing to get involved. Maybe God is speaking you to get involved, to, you know, to, to be committed, to, to report for duty, so to speak. Or you may be holding on to your tie, mistakenly think it's maybe it's not really his, it's mine. God can't bless those who hold back on him. Is he speaking to your heart? Is he calling you to give up what belongs to him? Because he is reminding you that he wants to bless you. And he can't bless you if you're holding back on him. You see, God loves you. And he wants you to love him. We're all to love God with all of our heart, aren't we? We're to honor Him with everything we do, with everything we are, with everything that we have. We're to love Him seven days a week, every hour that we have, not just a few hours when we're in church. It isn't just the 10% that is God's. It's the 100% that is God's. God gives us physical life. God gives us spiritual life. God gives us eternal life. Because of the amazing grace and the all-powerful love that God has for us, He's given us this wonderful future that we know that we can participate in. Yes, we look forward to that future when we go home to heaven. But while we're living on this earth, we have a duty as God's people to love the Lord your God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our might, with all our strength, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. God has given us a purpose for being here. You know, Martin Luther taught that every single one of us is a subject to two, two kingdoms, one spiritual and one of this earth. Luther taught that Christians should live in such a way as to satisfy both of those kingdoms, serving God inwardly and our neighbor outwardly. No matter what our vocation is, we should honor God. We should honor whatever earthly debts we have. We should honor both kingdoms. Now, our stewardship chairman, Ted McKinley, has developed this pamphlet that you found in your um, worship folder today. And with this ha uh, uh, pamphlet, it's hoped that this will help you think about, begin to think about your purpose for your life here and how you can serve and be a productive citizen of both kingdoms. We pray that this might stimulate your ability to grow in God to glorify Him, to make Him known to others. And so I pray that you'll take this with you and think about it and read it over and it'll be the start of your finding your purpose for serving God and serving our fellow man. And also, like I said before, we're going to start the initiative of um, uh, the new program for Reformation here and starting this food drive to render unto God what is God's, but also render unto our neighbors what we owe them. To commemorate the Reformation and the 70 years of Epiphany, we want to begin gathering food. And we're going to be doing that for the next three weeks so that we can help the food, help the hungry in Tallahassee through Lutheran social services. All the food that we gather will go to their, their food pantry to help hungry people in, in Tallahassee. Because you see, we have a debt to pay. And that debt is to our wonderful and gracious God. So we want to honor Him. We want to honor Him with our very lives. Because after all, we are His. Each one of us has His image stamped in us. And it's like Paul wrote to the church in Rome in chapter 12. He said, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy 
and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Amen? Amen. Let's rise for prayer. King of all creation, there is no other like you. You are the protector of all who trust in you. With you as our ruler and guide, may we pass through things temporal so that we don't lose the things eternal. Help us to give you the things that are yours and serve only you. Govern all things in this world so that your church will serve you with conviction, in confidence, and peace. May our faith, hope, and love be known and shown in our earthly journeys as your kingdom comes. You have blessed us with the gift of life in your Son, Jesus Christ. Accept our humble thanksgiving and empower us to demonstrate our thanks in words and actions and in dedicated service to you. Lord, in your mercy, creator of all healing, we lift up all who are in need, the hungry and the homeless, the mourning and the grieving, and all who seek healing. Give peace, hope, and healing according to your gracious will. We especially pray for one of our preschool teachers, Katya Juarez Villar, who was hospitalized last week for a kidney operation. We pray for a quick recovery from that surgery. We pray for Asa Hartsfield, who is the newborn son of Alexander Hartsfield, and is hospitalized still so that his lungs can mature and the other things uh, be cured in that uh, for him. You know, please bless this baby and mother. Let Asa go home healthy. We pray for Lynn Hansel, recovering from her cochlear implantation. We pray that whatever infection she might have had around the surgery be dissipated and, 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 and you taking care of it. And let this surgery be successful so that she can be given back her hearing again. We pray for Carol Connor, who will be undergoing surgery tomorrow for the treatment of her cancer. We ask you to guide the doctors in that operation and give her healing, give her peace and comfort, and let her, know, let her recover quickly with no recurrence of the disease again. We pray for Nell Green and Edie Boyd, for Tom Cooper, Linda Brown, Paige Palmer, Mike Sheeran, Corey Warrington, Tate, Derek, Murdane, and Brad. We pray for healing for Jorge Oliva's parents, Luis and Ilda. We pray for those dealing with cancer, Tan, Dee Wetzel, Ron, Marshall, Kathy, Danielle, Kat, Lisa, Greg Hill, Dorothy, Tom and Elizabeth. We pray for those affected with the COVID virus. Keep the members of our congregation and our families healthy and safe. We pray for those workers looking for meaningful employment. Open the hearts of those prospective employers, and, and we thank you for blessing those who have already found meaningful employment. Lord, in your mercy, creator of wisdom, Bless the call committee as they work with the names of prospective pastors which have been gathered and as they interview and recommend the man you have already picked to be our new senior pastor. Give them the stamina and energy to continue in this process. And we thank you for giving them the willingness to do your work in your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Loving creator, we pray for you to bless the people living on Murfield Court in our neighborhood. Help them to realize that they live in the two kingdoms and that they have responsibilities in each. Help us to work alongside of them as your spirit shows us how. And when the time comes, let us all go forth to the heavenly kingdom where, you, where we will fellowship with you in all eternity. Lord, in your mercy, hear us now as we continue with praying the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We now become before our Lord Jesus with contrite hearts to ask for his forgiveness of our sins. Most merciful God, we admit that we have bowed down to other gods of this world and gods of our own choosing. We confess that we have trusted in ourselves and others rather than in you. We have failed to rely on you at all times and have failed to properly thank you for your blessings. According to your abundant mercy, forgive our disobedience. Wash our from our God and cleanse us from our sin. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your steadfast love. Amen. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to all of you. And in the stead, and by the command of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please be seated. We're going to start over here to come up, you know, pretty much distancing yourself and go get the uh, body of Christ here. Come here to eat it. Come here to get the blood of Christ. Come there to drink it, and then you can put your cups in that container and go back and uh, pray at your seat. So let's begin over here. I'm finding myself at a loss for words. I love funny things. It's okay. Last thing I need is to be heard, but to hear what you would say. Word of God, speak. Would you pour down like rain, washing my eyes? Your Majesty. Still and no door in this place. Please let me stay and rest in your holiness. Word of God, speak. Word of God, 
speak, would you pour down like rain, washing my eyes to see your majesty, be still and know that you're in this place. Please let me stay and rest in your holiness, word of God speak. Finding myself in the midst of you, beyond the music, beyond the noise, all that I need is to be with you, and in the quiet, hear your voice, word of God speak. Would you pour down like rain, washing my eyes to see your majesty? Be still and know you're in this place. Please let me stay and rest in your holiness. Word of God, speak. Word of God speak, would you pour down like rain, washing my eyes to see your majesty, to be still and know you're in this place. Please let me stay and rest in your holiness. Word of God speak. Finding myself at a loss for words, and the funny thing is, it's okay. Last thing I need is to be heard, but to hear what you would say, word of God speak. Would you pour down like rain, washing my eyes to see your majesty, be still and know you're in this place. Please let me stay and rest in your holiness, word of God speak. Speak, would you pour down like rain, washing my eyes to see your majesty? Be still and know you're in this place. Please let me stay and rest in your holiness. Word of God, speak. In the midst of you, beyond the music, beyond the noise, all that I need is to be with you and the quiet, hear your Please rise. Now may the holy body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the true faith until time everlasting. And may God bless you. May God's face shine upon you. May God protect you. May God anoint you and give you His Grace. Amen. Anytime a heart turns from darkness.
us to learn. When he times temptation comes, it's someone stands to learn. When he times somebody lives to serve and not be served. But no one, no one, no one knows God is on the move, on the move. Hallelujah, God is on the move and he reminds me. God is on the move through us. Thank you all for being here. Uh, may God bless your week, and may God uh, bless you uh, in all that you do in, out in the world. And next week, be sure to bring uh, your food and your non-perishable items, and also wear red, because it is Reformation next week. So God bless you. Let's leave here with uh, our vision on our hearts and on our minds, with God's help to make lifelong, committed followers of Jesus here, there, and everywhere. Blessings to you. Thank you for being here.